Bromo dragonfly is a close structural relative of Dob, one of the most potent compounds in Pickal. Bromo dragonfly comes from the labs of David Nichols, and before I go any further, I should point out that Nichols does not approve of his compounds being used in humans. You can see the sentiment reflected in a quote from him from an article that appeared in Nature. So before you decide to take these compounds yourself, you might want to think of some healthier alternatives like crack cocaine. In 1996, the group reported this molecule, which is almost bromo dragonfly, but the core is different. It's a tetrahydrobenzodifuran rather than a benzodifuran. This synthesis started with the double alkylation of hydroquinone with ethylene chlorobromide. The bromide is the more reactive group, so it reacts first, and the uh, oxygens are doubly alkylated. Then the ring was brominated with elemental bromine, and this was used for a lithium halogen exchange, which is slightly different to normal. N-butyl lithium replaces the bromines with lithium atoms, but then the chloride is tethered in such a close position that the rings immediately snap shut and give two five-membered rings across the benzene ring from each other. The Reich formulation was used to install an aldehyde group, and this involves the reaction of dichloromethyl methyl ether with tin tetrachloride. It behaves in essentially the same manner as a Friedel Crafts catalyst. The tin bears a partial positive charge because of all those electron withdrawing chlorines, and that enables it to pull away an extra chloride from the ether, generating a reactive oxonium intermediate which is captured by the ring. Loss of a proton restores aromaticity, and the aldehyde group is revealed during the workup. The next step was a condensation with nitroethane under ammonium acetate catalysis to generate a nitrostyrene. This should be looking familiar by now, so I won't do the mechanism, and neither will I do the mechanism for the lithium aluminium hydride reduction. This is all fairly standard. And then the final step, bromination with bromine and acetic acid, generated this molecule, which is almost dragonfly, but lacks the aromaticity of the furan rings. Bromo dragonfly was then reported in 1998. They made it by going back to this intermediate, then protecting the amine group with trifluoroacetic anhydride, brominating as before, but now using DDQ as an oxidizing agent to change the tetrahydrobenzodifuran core into a benzodifuran core. You can see the introduction of the double bonds renders the aromatic system a lot larger. As for DDQ, the name stands for 2,3-dichloro-5,6-dicyano-1,4-benzoquinone, and it's a general-purpose oxidizing agent. It can accept two electrons and two protons, and in this case it was used to aromatize the rings in a way that it's difficult to draw a mechanism for. Alkaline hydrolysis removes the protecting group and completes the synthesis of a racemic bromo dragonfly, but in 2001 the group developed an alternative route that enabled them to synthesize each enantiomer separately so they could study which one was more active. Uh, as in the case of most amphetamines, it was the R isomer found to be more active. The 2001 synthesis contains a number of improvements, such as changing the starting material to this bis 2 hydroxyethyl hydroquinone, which was chlorinated with sulfonyl chloride. The bromination is the same as before, but the cyclization was this time affected with ethyl magnesium bromide, which was apparently more effective than the N-butyl lithium previously used. In the next step, they employ this chiral building block, which is made from D-alanine, and it's generally always better to find your chirality in a natural precursor rather than try to impose it using a chiral reagent. They add it onto the tetrahydrobenzodifuran core using a friedel crafts reaction on the acyl chloride. After this, they reduce the ketone that's generated with triethyl silane. How might you draw a mechanism for this? Well, you could imagine some sort of concerted process where the hydride is transferred to the carbon with concomitant formation of an oxygen-silicon bond as some sort of sigma bond metathesis affecting the first reduction. However, if you look at the experimental protocol, we're in a solution of trifluoroacetic acid, so it's not unreasonable that the reaction could be via an ionic pathway, perhaps forming a benzylically stabilized carbocation to which another hydride is transferred, reducing it down to the alkane level. The mechanism for these reagents are less well defined than for others, but either way it's a mild and selective reduction which leaves the trifluoroacetate group untouched. In this case, lithium aluminium hydride would probably reduce that as well, permanently alkylating the nitrogen. After this, they brominate, aromatize, and deprotect the amine, completing the synthesis of the R enantiomer of Bromo dragonfly. Now, if you do an internet search for Bromo dragonfly synthesis, at present the first match seems to be this wiki page associated with a website called Drugs Forum. And having a look at the synthesis that's been posted, it seems to be somebody's attempt at combining the methods of the David Nichols group with earlier experiments in Pickal. They've also written it like a recipe rather than a scientific paper, which is an interesting stylistic choice. I wanted to have a look at the thread where they discussed this synthesis, and it all seemed to be going fine until I got further down the registration page and it turned out that providing an introduction for yourself was mandatory to register on the forum, and at this point I lost all interest in ever visiting the website ever again. I'm going to assume that the synthesis they posted on their wiki was what they considered to be the best, and I've drawn out the scheme they propose here. Essentially the main problem I have is with these steps highlighted in red. The synthesis suggests aromatizing early on to generate the benzodifuran building block, then formulating using the Reich formulation. And the problem with this is now the double bond has been introduced early, there are three sites that the formulation can occur at, and it's no longer specific. 
In fact, benzofuran is comparable in its reactivity to indole, only it's a lot less well behaved. And you can imagine that even if the synthesis somehow got this far, the problems with bromination would be just the same as the problems with formulation. It would no longer be specific. So why can't we just change the order of steps and then do the DDQ oxidation as the final part of the synthesis? Well, the unprotected amine group is almost certainly incompatible with the DDQ oxidation. DDQ, as well as being an oxidant, is also quite nicely set up for a conjugate addition elimination, which is not something you want to happen. And even if that precise conjugate addition elimination doesn't happen, the amine group is still probably susceptible to oxidation. The conclusion is that the amine group needs to be protected during the addition of DDQ. Couldn't we just aromatize whilst it was the nitroalkene stage, though? Well, that might work, but the following reduction then might be a problem. It's possible that the furan rings that we just oxidized would be reduced again, and if you're really unlucky, the bromide might not survive either. So whilst that synthesis might be fine, if you skip the aromatization step and use it to make the 1996 compound, currently the best way to make bromo dragonfly is still the route reported in 2001, or of course you could make the racemate using the original 1998 route.